previously, I've most likely shocked some of you guys with the temperature results of the RX 5700 XT. Today, however, I'm going to take a look at its little brother, the RX 5700 by AMD. Well, to be exact, this model is actually by Sapphire, but these cards are reference models by AMD, so there's that. Right now, there still aren't any custom versions out yet, but if the news I heard turn out to be true, we should be expecting custom versions sometime mid-August and partially in September. Now while many mainly focus on the bigger brother, this GPU, the RX 5700 non-XT variant, could potentially more or less be AMD's secret weapon for now. Right now you can pick it up for about 330 to 350 US dollars, depending where and when you buy, obviously. And the direct competitor of this card by Nvidia most likely is the RTX 2060, the non-super version. We're looking at pretty much the same pricing. Good models go for like 340 to 350 dollars currently. But what do I mean with secret weapon? What makes the RX 5700 so special? And are we experiencing overheating issues here too, as it's the case with the XT version? Or could you simply go and pick such a graphics card up with no need to be concerned? All that we'll discuss in this video. As always, I have to admit, in terms of looks, I love the way AMD designs their reference cards. For some reason, they look really good to me, gorgeous actually. But of course, that's simply a matter of taste, and most of you will probably have different opinions on the aesthetics. Just a shame such reference models usually happen to be pretty loud and don't really do too well when it comes to cooling. While the RX 5700 XT variant might look a little bit more high grade, if you will, I gotta say the RX 5700 makes a good impression too. Unfortunately, the Radian logo, other than on the XT model, does not light up. I really like that lit up logo. Furthermore, a backplate is obviously missing here. In a price range of roughly $350, however, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I just wanted to point it out anyway. Anyway, AMD's Navi graphics cards are now based on slightly different tech. Before, we were used to seeing the dated GCN architecture on pretty much the last few Radeon generations. It's pretty much been in use for many years by now. And with each architecture, there's a point a limit is reached. So for Navi, AMD now goes with the new so-called RDNA, Radeon DNA. Albeit, there are still some leftovers from the GCN architecture to be found within the Radeon DNA. But that's something we could argue about. However, let's be honest, it doesn't matter for us consumers. What matters at the end of the day is performance. So as I've said before, when it comes to pricing the RX 5700, for now should be compared with Nvidia's RTX 2060. So how are the specs of both looking then? Well, first of all, it needs to be said that Nvidia's RTX GPUs feature real ray tracing. Now we sure could argue whether or not it really works as intended or if we even need it, but it is technology that could be tech of the future, it could be. But I highly doubt an RTX 2060 comes with enough ray tracing horsepower anyway to actually seriously impress consumers. What's a huge advantage in this price bracket for AMD is the fact they equipped their card with 8GB of VRAM. 6GB on the RTX 2060 by no means is bad, but with today's partially VRAM hungry game titles, we might run short with 6GB. And other than that, there's nothing really interesting spec-wise that's worth pointing out. So let's not waste any more time and get straight to the important stuff, the benchmarks. Since I usually don't get any support from manufacturers such as AMD, Nvidia and so on, I'm pretty late with my videos on these topics. On the bright side, I'm there for testing with the latest graphics drivers. And yes, indeed, AMD has worked on their drivers since release day. So there you go, let's roll the benchmarks.
I gotta say I know for sure which GPU I would go for in this price range. Without a doubt, I'd go for the RX 5700, simply because in many game titles it's faster. In fact, in some situations, there's not exactly a huge gap between this and its bigger brother, the RX 5700 XT. We definitely have to compare the RX 5700 non-XT version with the RTX 2060 by the green team. Both of these cards cost about the same amount of money right now, but the Radian card in certain games does bring noticeably more performance to the table, which of course doesn't mean the 2060 would be a bad option. The pretty old title by now, Crisis 3, as we are used to, doesn't seem to perform well with modern AMD graphics cards. Other than that, a clear picture is painted. For full HD 1080p gaming, the RX 5700 is a great choice. Maybe even a little overkill because with a few exceptions, most titles run well above the 60 FPS mark at the 1440p resolution at maxed out graphics settings that is, no doubt. We practically even could game at 4K if we decided to to lower the settings a little bit. And finally, AMD manages to shine when it comes to power consumption. I'd even go this far and say the RX 5700 is a bit more efficient than an RTX 2060 since in many cases we see slightly higher frame rates with the Radeon GPU, however, the power draw pretty much is identical between the two. The only aspect we currently need to fear a bit with AMD cards is temperatures, at least when dealing with reference designs. But to be fair, Nvidia doesn't always do great with their reference coolers either. And I think this is the right moment to get something straight. Previously I've made a bad mistake in my RX 5700 XT review when it comes to temperatures and how I compared them. I kinda exaggerated. And no, no one, neither AMD nor someone else pressures me to do this. It's just the fact that I can't sleep at night with me putting out false information into the world. Recently I'm dealing with some health related issues and lots of stress, resulting me in being really, really tired. And I don't know how things are for you when you're really tired, but I happen to make some really dumb mistakes in such a state. Mistakes that often are so damn obvious, yet I fail to notice them in time and only do so when it's already too late. But my false information cannot be excused in no way. Well, the actual mistake I made in my previous video was that I didn't report and compare the usual GPU temperature, but instead focused on the junction temperature, which AMD kindly lets us read out. Nvidia's GPUs on the other hand don't even report junction temps, yet I mistakenly compared them, which was idiotic of me. The junction temperature readout usually is much higher than the common GPU surface temperature. After all, it's the value of the GPU's transistors and not the surface we usually measure and compare with. This means in my previous video I've always spoken of 107 degrees Celsius and yeah, the following results are my new official and corrected ones tested on an open air test bench. As you can see, there's a huge difference between the temperature measured at the GPU surface and the junction readout. Nonetheless, the false information I spread in the last video doesn't affect my conclusion I came up with. There's still problems with that reference cooler. Installed into a case with AMD's default fan curve, the GPU surface temperature is still in the 90s. And unfortunately, I still happen to be correct with the GDDR6 VRAM overheating issue. In my opinion, that is the real problem with the RX 5700 XT in its reference design that is. According to GDDR6 specs, the memory should not exceed 95 degrees Celsius. Installed into a case with AMD's fan curve, I was hitting 98 degrees though. So we are already exceeding that limit. But at least there's something that can be done about it by simply manually optimizing the fan curve and therefore increasing the fan speed. So with this I just wanted to correct myself. However, I will be uploading a separate video with an apology soon. But now let's get back to the graphics card you're actually here for, the RX 5700. While the temperatures as expected aren't the greatest, they can be considered okay. And with that model, we luckily don't seem to have to worry too much about overheating GDDR6 memory as it's pretty much the case with the XT version. But sure, once you install that card into an actual system in a case, expect higher temperatures. However, I don't think those of the RX 5700 are critical. Nevertheless, I'd recommend adjusting the fan curve. By doing so, the card of course gets noisier, but in the long run it's much healthier for the card and you maybe, just maybe avoid going through an RMA process down the line in the future. Because the fan only
only happens to spin at 2100 rpm at max with AMD's latest drivers, something I believe will be fixed sometime soon. But once again, I can't really complain about the RX 5700 non-XT version. The results are somewhat okay. On default in my book, that blower style fan cannot be considered unbearably loud. At idle, it's that silent actually. But at load, it gets very audible indeed. And if you decide to increase the fan speed, you quickly hear noises that remind you of a jet engine. But then again, it's not that bad with this specific card. So all in all, if you can't wait for custom models to be released, you could go for the reference version of the RX 5700, even though I'd still advise you to wait until custom models arrive. Nonetheless, this Navi graphics card sure did manage to surprise me in a positive way. In my opinion, it offers a very good price to performance ratio, brings lots of performance to the table and doesn't consume too much power. It's just the temperatures you have to keep an eye on. Other than that, a great if not better alternative to an RTX 2060, especially because of those 2GB of additional VRAM. So this GPU I can rate with my gold award. And as always, big thanks for sticking around so long and watching till the end.